Hi everyone, my name is Nick De Cristofaro. I'm a customer engineer network specialist and I'll be your presenter today. So today we're going to talk about packet mirroring. So what is packet mirroring? Packet mirroring is a feature which allows you to monitor VPC traffic flows in real time. This monitoring ability gives security conscious enterprises the ability to observe and to react to traffic patterns which may be malicious in nature. Packet mirroring is often used in conjunction with an organization's IDS, or Intrusion Detection System, to provide threat detection and mitigation. Packet mirroring captures all ingress and egress traffic in packet data, such as payloads and headers, and it exports all traffic, therefore providing full network visibility. The mirrored traffic can be sent out of band to security and monitoring appliances from an extensive list of partners for threat detection and also network performance and application troubleshooting. Packet mirroring can be enabled on a subnet level, network tags, or specific instances. Now here's an overview of the demo. In this demo, we'll specifically deploy a Jenkins server, apply a firewall rule to allow only trusted access to the server, we'll then act as a malicious user, use the script console to run a reverse shell session back to the untrusted device, the untrusted device now has shell access to your Jenkins servers as root and can extract credentials, perform malicious actions, etc. We'll then verify that packet mirroring sent mirrored packets to the IDS, and Suricata in this case should identify this rule violation and report it in the logs. So let's see how this works. I've already configured Suricata, my Jenkins server, my attacker VM, and the packet mirroring policy. Note for simplicity of this demo, the attacker VM is on GCP, but in reality, it could be any machine out on the internet. Now first, I'm going to log on to my Suricata VM and look at the IDS logs with the following command. So let's leave the, these logs open. So here we can put a couple of enters to make a line break between the previous logs and the log for this demo. So next, I'm going to log on to the attacker VM machine and run a simple netcat command. Let's open a new tab here. So here I have netcat running with the flags dash LVP on port 4444. So we'll keep this SSH window open and let's move on to our Jenkins browser. So since I've prepped the IDS and the attackers or the hackers receiving Linux machine, let's work on the Jenkins server now. So here's my Jenkins machine. So what I'm going to do is log on and go to the script console of the Jenkins server. So here's my script console. So next we'll enter the reverse shell script with my Linux machine's external IP. I'm going to copy paste this part of the code. Once I've done that, then we will click the button here, run. So we've now run the reverse shell script and we should have access to the Jenkins server from the Linux machine. So if I return to the Linux machine, we see here that it has updated a connect statement here. So if we return to the Linux machine, notice that the Linux SSH window that we kept up has updated to showcase a connection from your Jenkins external IP address. So if we want a better SSH experience, we can run a bash script. And now as you can see, I'm actually as root on the Jenkins server. So I've invoked a bash shell and now I am connected as root. So we can run who am I? And you can see here that I've gained root access to the Jenkins server. So now technically the attacker can extract credentials, etc., do anything that they want as root on the Jenkins server. So if we go back to this tab here, recall that I had a tail on the IDS logs to check if there were any incidents. So you can see here, the IDS has detected that there is a Metasploit or reverse SSH attempt. So as you can see, we've successfully set up packet mirroring to an IDS to catch malicious activity or a policy violation. You can choose to do continuous packet mirroring or enable and disable packet mirroring based on predefined triggers. For example, a DevOps or network team may want to analyze traffic patterns to understand why an application is experiencing degraded performance or generating error messages. 
In this demo, I've already configured the components that you see in this diagram, namely the VPC, subnets, global load balancer, web servers, collectors, the packet mirroring policy in its disabled state, and finally cloud logging, cloud function, pub sub, and the environments to trigger packet mirroring. Now, if we look at this demo, the packet mirroring execution flow is as follows in the diagram. Step one, an invalid request is sent to the load balancer, triggering a 500 error code from the web servers. Step two, an event is generated by cloud logging monitoring, logging the error message. Step three, cloud pub sub is configured as a sync for cloud monitoring and is receiving the error message. Step four, when an event is pushed into Cloud PubSub, Cloud Function is configured to trigger on that topic to enable packet mirroring. Finally, in step five, packet mirroring is enabled and traffic is mirrored to the collector VMs for further investigation into the potential error messages. We will be utilizing TCP dump in this demo to look at packets captured. Now let's see this in action. Now here I've SSH into my collector VM and I'm going to run TCP dump to capture mirrored traffic. The specific TCP dump syntax is stating that I want to capture traffic to this VM, but I do not want to capture traffic from networks that are in this specific CIDR range. And this is because traffic from the CIDR range is actually destined for this specific VM. So this VM is actually in that CIDR block. So I want to capture traffic that's not destined for this VM, therefore being the mirrored traffic that's coming to the collector. So as you can see, I'm running TCP dump right now, but I'm not re receiving any traffic at this time. And above here, you can see the packet mirror policy that I've created. And you can see that currently the policy enforcement is disabled. So packet mirroring is not enabled. I'm not receiving any traffic at the moment. So I'm going to leave this session open and I'm going to open a new window here in Cloud Shell. Next, I'm gonna trigger an HTTP 500 error message to my HTTP load balancer endpoint. So here I can simply do a curl. To my HTTP load balancer endpoint. And as you can see here, it triggered a 500 internal server error. So let's return to the collector terminal window here. And now we can see that traffic is being received by the collector. So the traffic that we're actually seeing here is the health check probes that are being received by the web server instances. So now we can close the TCP dump session here and issue a control C and we can exit out of the collector VM. Now, if I navigate to the cloud function section, here's my cloud function that, that I defined earlier. If I select the three buttons under action and click view logs, we can see here from the logs that packet mirroring was triggered based on the HTTP 500 error code, and that was generated by the web server instances. So you can see here in the first statement here, function execution started, the 500 error was detected, and then activating packet mirroring for analysis, and then we called the API to trigger packet mirroring. Note that while this solution provides an example of what is possible using a simple HTTP error message code, in this case, the HTTP 500 error code, the solution can be customized to support a variety of different environments and use cases. Advanced logic can be created for your own customized application, looking at a variety of different metrics, anomalies, and logging events. Now, if I return to the packet mirroring section, and we have a look at the packet mirroring policy, you can see here that the policy enforcement is set to enabled. Now this concludes our demo. Here are some useful resources for configuring packet mirroring, as well as useful solutions for configuring demos such as these. Thank you.